We're going to be looking at time the, to, today as a, as a commodity, um, but I want to open up with this kind of example. Um, and everybody in here watches movies, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's kind of like saying, do you use a phone? Um, you may not have seen this one. This is 2006, seven ish somewhere in there. In Time. Uh, in Time is this. You may recognize one of the individuals there. Timberlake, anybody? Boy band fan? Okay. Uh, so the basic premise of this movie is this is like set in 2169, something like that, and in the future. This dystopian society and that um, everybody is genetically engineered to stop aging at 25. Hey, sign me up, right? The, the, the other side of that, though, is they have to control the population. And so at that time, a clock starts on your arm. Uh, and this is what that clock looks like. Uh, and it, be, it begins counting down one year. You have one year. What that clock is, is the time, if you want to go buy a coffee, it costs you a couple minutes. When you get paid, you get paid in time. Everything is based on time. So time literally becomes a commodity. And there are different zones uh, and different areas. And this is basically, a, uh, Justin Timberlake wants to destroy the system because he finds out there's enough time for everybody, but the people at the top are hoarding it so that, you know, they keep populations down and that kind of stuff. So you could actually live forever uh, if you just keep enough time on your, on your arm. Uh, and so this concept of using time to buy things, using time uh, as a com literally as a commodity, you are looking at your arm, seeing the minutes and seconds count down. And everything you do, every action you take, will cost you something. And so the people who don't have a lot of time, can you imagine what they do with their lives? They run everywhere. They run. They do everything very quickly. They, there's not a lot of time for anything extra, right? Uh, and then, but on the other side, in a different zone where everybody has all the time in the world, Justin Timberlake eventually goes there trying to, to you know, take down the system. And when he gets out of the car the first time, he begins to run. Because that was his habit, right? Because time was so precious. He didn't have a lot of time. But somebody had given him like 100 years so he could be in that zone. And everybody looked at him when he began to run. You know why? Because he was different. Everybody else walked, was leisure, ha, 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 tell jokes. They got all the time in the world. But Justin Timberlake had to change his, to fit in and understand that for them, time was very different. So you see very quickly the use of time is very different. And so we'll get into that. So looking at time as a commodity, this example really uh, highlights that. Uh, but we don't always think that way, right? I mean, there are times when we think, well, we've got all the time in the world. And there are times when we think... Uh, Time is short, right? Time is short. And some of you told me that. Um, when Karen and I first moved here, and, you know, we had Josiah and Vivian. Vivian was born here. And some of you told us, you know, enjoy this time. It's short. They grow up quickly. And I was like, okay, I just want to be out of diapers, you know. I just... <laughs> um, but now looking back on it, it does. It passes by so quickly. Uh, and you are right. Um, <coughs> Uh, because you've experienced those things. And the Bible tells us uh, some of these things as well. Job says, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, Job 7, 6. And we look at um, uh, Job and, and, and his life. He's a little bit jaded. Um, but we look at some other things he says about time. He says, Man who was born of woman is short-lived and full of turmoil. Like a flower, he comes forth and withers. He also feels like a shadow and does not remain. And there are days when, it, when life feels that way, right? When time is, just seems to be going by so quickly. Um, James 4 says something similar, but a little, dark, a little less dark. James 4.14 4, says, Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. And you get out of the shower. I always think about this verse when I get out of the shower. You know, that annoying vapor that's there and trying to you know, take care of yourself, and there's this vapor. You just got to get out of the way because you can't see anything. So that life is like that vapor that just goes away. It's there for a time. Um, and then 1 Corinthians 7, 
verse 29, But this I say, brethren, the time has been shortened, so that from now on those who have wives should be as though they had none. What is, what is Paul saying there, that time has been shortened? Has, has time literally been taken and scrunched down and shortened? Do you remember the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 7? The persecution, this, this thing that was, that was there. So for many of them, life was shortened because of the persecution. Uh, because of everything that was going on, um, the lifespan of a Christian wasn't that long. Uh, so for some of them, time uh, had been shortened. Uh, not literally, but um, figuratively. Do you remember the time when, or the only time, uh, when God kind of altered time? Do you remember that? The sun stood still, right? Now, I don't know if you guys got this email and people started freaking out about it. Like, oh man, look at this. Scientific computers have found the lost day and it verifies that the, there was... Did you get that email that was going around? Um, that, that doesn't happen. Uh, you can't like just count back as, oh, we found a lost day. Um, sounds cool, right? But not, not legit. So, uh, but that's the only time that anything has happened. Now, what is, as time as a commodity, what are some other commodities that we have? What are some other I'm just skipping the obvious ones, though. I mean, these are great. But, like, money's one, right? Money's a commodity. Um, gold, you know, currency, all those kinds. Of, those are all commodities, right? Silver, you know, you see those commercials on TV. Uh, and so those are all commodities, right? But we look at time as a commodity. Time is very different as a commodity, right? Uh, how is time different? While, we remain, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease, right? Um, so here's the anti-global warming verse. But uh, this, this happens. This always happens, right? They just keep, the seasons keep going. So how can time as a commodity be different? Can you borrow, buy, destroy, create time? It's a limited amount. And God is no respecter of persons when it comes to that commodity, Right? Uh, every, everybody's flying along at the same speed, uh, so you can't create, borrow, buy, or destroy time. You can't, it can't be stored, brought back, hurried, or slowed down, although it seems like it sometimes, right? Uh, there are times when it seems like it slows down. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can budget it. You can budget it. That's a very good point. Uh, so you can, you can budget and, and, and uh, monitor it. You can... Uh, do those kind of things with it, but it's going to keep on going. Uh, yes, sir. You mentioned you know, commodities, all of those things that are commodities, the things that we use for our benefit. Mm-hmm. Time is something that we also use for our benefit, so that's, I think that's a good what you're saying about commodities. Yeah. Yes, I mean, commodities are all things that are for our benefit. Exactly. Y'all, I don't know if y'all all heard that, and time is one of those things that's for our benefit. Yes, uh, yes sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. And, you know, you know, like a bank account or anything like that, we know when its end is. We don't know when our end is, do we? So it's always kind of, yes, sir. Like whenever you're young, your, your, your commodities can just build up, build up because in your youth, you go out and you work, work all the time, build up. And yes, sir. you get older and you get a retirement age, you have a, a set income. Then your commodity seems to cease and go down, and you just live where, where you can. Yes, sir. That's time. You know? Time. That's actually a very good point. I never thought about that, and and that's a concept of our concept of time as well. That uh, when our when we're younger, we build up commodities, and when and, and when we retire, we use those commodities and kind of just are on this uh, plane. We don't know how long that's going to last. And same way with time. When 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 we were younger, what did we think of time? It was slow. Uh, sometimes time was our best friend, right? We had all the time in the world. And now time is our enemy, right? We get to the time where we, we're, we're time, we have, view time differently. Uh, so, uh, yes, that's a very good point. And our conceptualization of, of time. And you try and get kids to think about time, they have no concept. Uh, now I'm going to... Yes, ma'am. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's a great place to live, though. Yeah. Yes. And that, that's, in, that's in this other, I guess, we go through those phases, right? There, we're in our adolescence, time is, well, you know, time. There's not, not even a real concept of time. And then you go into where the workforce and you're raising children and you don't have any time, right? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. And then, but that's the, that's the general concept. Uh, and, and that goes back to what you are saying earlier about what we do with it. You know, how do we budget the time that's been given to us? Uh, which is an excellent uh, concept uh, when we start looking at time as a commodity. Um, looking at uh, time, there's only, there's only, wise, oh, uh, only wise and unwise use of time, right? When we, as, as you look at it as a commodity, these are the only ways of looking at time. Uh, wise and unwise use of time, which, you know, children don't, they will probably use time unwisely, uh, Yes, ma'am. We don't look at time from God's standpoint. Yes. Because God doesn't have a, he has a clock for us, I guess, but we are not familiar with that clock. No, we're not. We, we just know that we're born to that. Yes. But we take that clock that man has made mm-hmm. and we run our lives based on that clock. Exactly. That's exactly a very good point. And it's actually, I don't think you read my notes or something. Because uh, <laughs> the very next, God is the source of time, right? God is a source of time. Um, now, uh, Acts 17, uh, 28, uh, for in him we live and move and exist. We have our very being in God. Now, is God subject to time? No, he's not. I mean, time is this created plane that he made. He is not subject to it. We are, live on this life and are subject to time. Yes, sir. It says that God, that today is a thousand years, and him a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Exactly. That's a fancy way of saying God doesn't... Time is so different for God. Uh, that's a very good point, and, and time is very different uh, for God. And as we look at, at time, God can look at the whole time of man. This blows me away just thinking about this. Um, God can probably look at the whole timeline of man uh, and know how it's going to play out. Um, and um, that's why God is almighty, omnipresent, and, and all-knowing in all things. Uh, he looks at a plane at that very differently than us. Uh, and then time is different because no portion of time can be recalled. We have memories, right? Second uh, Samuel 14, 14, For we will surely die and are like water spilled on the ground which cannot be gathered up again. Now, if you've spilt water on thirsty, dry ground, what does it do? It's gone quick, right? And the same way with time that's used, you can't gather it back up again. Uh, it can't be stored back up. Time is very different than any other resource. Uh, that we have, but it is from God. The time we've been given uh, is from God. So time is different. Time is opportune. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter one or chapter three, verse verses one and, and following, what, what do we say about time? What does Solomon say about time? Do you remember Ecclesiastes three? There is a time for everything, and he begins to take it upon himself to list a few of those everythings, right? Uh, and uh, which, as a child, I always liked the one a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones because the biblical precedent for throwing rocks, okay? Uh, that's what children do. If you've ever been to a lake, what's, what do you need to do when you get to a lake? You've got to throw rocks in it, right? You've got to skip a rock. That's what you do. So there's a time to do all those things. There's a precedent for doing these things, uh, and we are giving time. Um, we are given time to reap what we have sown. Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 7 through 10. Uh, what is this law of sowing and reaping? What does that mean? As you sow, so shall you reap. Right? That's the law of sowing and reaping. Now, we're, in general, far from an agricultural community down here, or a culture, not, not a lot of us. Uh, on this side of the county, anyway, are, are so agricultural based. Uh, but how do we understand just, and uh, we kind of saw this when Dave was going through the different things about the farmer. Um, uh, we are farmers, right, as of uh, in, in some ways, in looking at what you put into the field 
in a normal situation, barring any unforeseen events, you will get back out, right? If you are a lazy farmer and don't do much with it, what are you going to get out of it? Very little. I mean, God is gracious and stuff grows, uh, but you probably have more weeds than you have good, good stuff, right? Uh, and so the same thing in our lives. Uh, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, this will he also reap. And what do, we, what do children, what do, what do adolescents, youth say about sowing? I'm just, yeah, that old, that old phrase, I'm going to sow my wild oats. And you're probably going to reap wild oats. How many people do you know that, well, they, well I'm going to sow my wild oats and then, then I'll settle down later on? How many people do you know that are still paying for the wild oats they sowed? Uh, and that's, that's something that, no, I'm not saying you can't, that can't be changed. But if you sow wild oats, it's harder to turn those around to, um, I guess, what would, what's the opposite of wild oats? Tame oats? I don't know. So it's, it's hard to turn those things around. Domesticated oats. Uh, it's hard to turn that, turn that around, right? And so if we, if we sow in the time that's been given to us, if we sow the things that are profitable, uh, we will reap those things that are profitable. Uh, we, may not, we may not have time to turn things around. Yes, sir? That's true sometimes. <laughs> what, is it, what do you say? It's like a double measure padded down. It's like, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to cost this much. Uh, and so, yes, and sometimes in an inopportune time, right, those things that were sown, uh, that's exactly right. Uh, but what's interesting here is, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we, have, if we do not grow weary. And what are we looking, what is our, now I'm not saying we don't have, there's, there are no benefits for being a Christian and walking a Christian life uh, right now. I'm not saying that. On a daily basis, there are benefits. There are a lot of things that we don't have to deal with because we didn't sow our wireless or aren't living in that. There are a lot of things, now there are general things that everybody has to deal with, right? That every physical person has to deal with in their lives, and we are subject to those things as well. But what are we really looking forward to? Where, where is our reaping that we're looking for? In heaven, right? Now, I'm, we can enjoy life here. That is not, I'm not saying anything against that. I'm just saying our real reward uh, is somewhere else. So in due time, we will uh, we'll reap if we don't grow weary. Uh, and so then while we have opportunity, while we have uh, this concept of time, when we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, even the ones that aren't good to us. I think it's in the subtext if you read it in the Greek. Uh, and especially to those who are the household of faith. Actually, it's not as a joke about the Greek, but other passages also say that, right? Even pray for our enemies, right? Uh, and, and do good to all men, um, even the ones that cut you off in traffic. So, especially those who are the household of faith. So this is, we are to look for opportune moments, right? Uh, and use our time uh, wisely uh, in the service of God. Uh, and so we are given also time to prepare ourselves. And I don't want to go, this, this, just looking at this expectation here in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. Somebody's measuring my growth. For by this time you ought to be teachers. There is an expectation by God that we grow. Now, I, this is... Um, my opinion, but I do believe that there is a healthy opinion of, of how we should grow, right? Uh, God's not going to have one person uh, make them grow faster than somebody else, depending on, I mean, you guys have children, right? Uh, our, every children learns differently, grows differently, has different skill sets. God understands that. Uh, but do we abuse that, uh, His good graces? No. We grow as we can and as fast as we can in the service of God. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Oh and no. A lot of people think that. Yep. I already know we are teaching by examples as well. Exactly. Did y'all hear that? Does this mean that you have to have a classroom setting uh, in order to, by this time, you ought to be teachers? No. Some of you have live in students, uh, some of you have uh, grandchildren, some of you, uh, there's all kinds of influence that you guys have, that we all have, uh, to be able to teach. Uh, it is not a classroom setting. 
uh, alone. That's a very good point. And so there is, this op- there is this time is given to us to prepare ourselves. There is an expectation of preparation. Uh, we are given time to prepare ourselves of Romans 13. Uh, do this knowing the time that is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer to us than we, when we believe. So there is this concept also of urgency with time. You know, wake up. Don't, don't fall asleep in your spirituality. This may be like you need this on our alarm clock, right? Uh, we, need, we need to get up. We need to get going. We don't need to fall asleep spiritually because time is short. Don't fall asleep, all right? Um, don't let us behave unpopularly as... Uh, but let us behave properly as in the day, not carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual... Pro- and the, 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 the things that were around then are still around now. Uh, we aren't to engage in those things. But, right... But put on the Lord Jesus Christ to make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. So make sure that we're using our time wisely uh, in the time that's been given to us, that we're not, not sleeping it off. We were given time to prepare ourselves. That's not like a commentary against naps. I mean, there are times that we need to regenerate, just so you know. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17. We are given time to prepare, prepare ourselves. Therefore, be careful how you walk. Not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time. We don't always do that. There's a lot of time-wasting things out there, right? I'm going to say something that is maybe a bad reflection on me as a parent. I'm going to say no. Uh, it was, school was out of session, and we let Josiah play the Xbox, the you know, video game system that's popular now, and... There are apps that I have that actually register how much time he's on his computer, how much time he's on his phone, how much time he's on the Xbox. And I don't always pay attention to that. We monitor that stuff very closely. Um, playing those things are a, a privilege, not a right, and we control those things. If grades aren't in the right place, I guess I'm telling you that I'm, I am responsible, I promise. So um, when school was out, we let them unfettered uh, kind of use, and I looked at his time use one day. It was like six and a half hours he played Xbox. I was like, that's six and a half hours. He could have been mowing the lawn. No. <laughs> but do you see how sometimes time gets away from us? I wasn't even paying attention. You know, we, we have other things that we're doing, uh, and that's not necessarily a wise use of time, right? And so when we look at our, how are we using our time, this, I guess, is really kind of the point of this lesson, is to call to remembrance that time is a commodity, and how are we using it? What are we doing with it? Uh, are we making the most of the time that's given to us? He says, then, uh, so then don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and using our time wisely. Um, time is opportune, and we're given time to teach, and this goes back to what we were saying earlier in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Um, what time is appropriate? According to Deuteronomy chapter 6, 6 through 7, what time is an appropriate time to teach? At all times, right? And you know those moments when, when it's time, all right, it's time to insert life lesson here, right, with kids, with those who are around. Uh, you've seen movies where people do that, and it just, but in the movies, like, you, the kid, it, it clicks with the kid in the movies, and it completely changed their lives, and we don't ever see that part of it, Right? Uh, that, that end of the movie where they've grown up and this person said this to me and it completely changed my life and I'm a better person than I was before because this one, we don't see that, right? We just, we see the, we're, we're sowing that seed, those seeds of wisdom, the, the teaching that God's given us, that other people have given us and passing that along uh, and using the time that we've been given to teach. We don't always get to see the fruit of those things that we've sown in people. Uh, and so, um, but maybe we will, in heaven, right, get to see the fruit of those things that we've sown. So when we look at this passage, it's probably at all, at all times, is basically what this passage is teaching, uh, is a good time to teach. It's a good time to sow those things. Um, and this is a very common passage. But um, many of you have probably walked beside or had people like this in your life that did these things. Colossians chapter 4 uh, we are given time to teach Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, walking, or making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech, 
uh, always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person. Uh, so not only to those that were that our children that we have responsible uh, are, for, are responsible for in our household, but even those who are outside, we look at uh, conduct yourselves uh, with wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of every opportunity we have. And that's not always easy because we're not always thinking about that, right? We're focused. It's so easy to get focused. I'm a hundred percent guilty with that. Focus on what's going on, and then after the fact of whatever opportunity. It's like, oh, I should have said this, or I should have handled it this way. Uh, and there are things that we look at, and if we try to keep this kind of focused in our lives, that we make sure that we're using those opportunities uh, to, to teach and make sure that our, our speech is seasoned. Yes, sir. A lot of um, the big problem we have these days, especially with younger people, and I know a lot of older people mm-hmm. that I work with, every opportunity they get, they're on their, their, their cell phone. Oh, yeah. They long, they <coughs> Mm-hmm. The cell phone rules of their life. They oh, yes. The addiction to the cell phone. Yes, sir. Somehow we've got to find out how to put the word on the cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, to put the word in the trough where they have their head all the time, right? That's what we need to be doing. Exactly. Uh, and that's, and that's where a big time waster for a lot of people. Uh, and how can we uh, get a word in, how, you know, in, during when their heads are in that uh, digital trough, so to speak. And so uh, in, in this uh, scenario, making sure that our words are seasoned, right? Uh, I don't know if you've ever had anything that needed more salt, ever. Gravy's always hard to season just right. I don't, I don't know if, you, okay, moving on. But, but yes, there are things that need more salt. Uh, and some of us might need more salt than others. We need to make sure that we're seasoned well, uh, in, in how we talk to people. Because what is the end goal? My speech and my actions are not just about how I'm feeling in that moment, are they? Because now I, I'm a servant of Christ. Not just serving Christ, but serving others. And I don't get to choose, well, I'm just not feeling like it right now. I don't get to choose that. I, when I said, yes, Lord, you are my Lord and Savior, and I, I was baptized into Him I don't get to choose when I feel like it and don't feel like it. Now, I realize that it's not, this is not, I'm preaching to the choir here. But some of our youth are kind of, are, are the older who are younger. I'm just not feeling like it this morning. Hashtag not feeling like it, right? Just not, not, doing, not doing things that are responsible things they need to be doing because it's not feeling like it. Um, and we need to make sure that we're not uh, guilty of that as well with our time. Uh, even though sometimes just not feeling it. Bond servant must not be quarrelsome. We could probably end there, right? <laughs> but kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of truth, that then they come to their senses and escape uh, from the snare of the devil, having been held captive to, by him to do his will. And that's really what a lot of us, when we look at you know, Colossians, and then move into this passage here, that's what we're doing with our time. We get to help people get out of that snare. Have you ever seen um, snare traps or any of those kind of traps that you use for small game? Have you all seen those? Um, they cannot get out of those without help. The more they pull, uh, the more they, 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 this binds them more and more. Now, I'm not saying, uh, well, we cannot get out of sin by ourselves. No. We cannot, there, had, there had to be a sacrifice, and God has to help us. Now, if they're sitting there pulling against the snare, and nobody told them there's a way to get out of it. Nobody told them there's a way to get out of it. And that's what we're doing. We're going around helping people who are snared by sin, helping them understand, oh, by the way, the reason your life's not going anywhere is because you're snared, you're anchored. Would you like to change that? Now, if they want to stay in that snare, that's their prerogative, right? God gave them that choice, too. But we're going to help them get out of those snares. And so, again, when you walk up to somebody who's in a snare, you need to speak easy sometimes and come to them and help them with with that. Yes, ma'am. I just want to give an example of the scripture. Mm -hmm. I was in the bank, and the people that 
come and picked up the money and all of this money coming out the door. Mm -hmm. And I'm not thinking, I just said, well, you yeah, hurry up and get out because I wouldn't want someone to rob you, rob us with me in here. Oh. You know? And a lady was standing there and she said, you know, you don't want him to rob him when he's outside either. He's got a family, you know, he doesn't want to get hurt. You know, and I thought at that moment, mm -hmm. And I started to argue with her about it, but then I realized, yes, you were wrong. Yeah. And so I just apologized mm -hmm. to her. You know, yeah. yes, you're right. I had no right to say that. Yeah. But a lot of times we say things really without even thinking yes. yep. the, the, the wrong that mm -hmm. it might be for someone else to hear. Exactly, yes. And that's we're, we're guilty of saying things that maybe in the moment probably isn't the best thing. I've done my fair share of those things. So we're, we all have, and... Um, Again, using, using our time, making sure what we're saying is appropriate. And, and sometimes also making sure what we're saying, we're not just parroting what the world says about stuff. Um, like right now, there's a phrase that I, I'm not a huge fan of, and I, some of you probably use it, um, and I'm not, no judgment. I'm, just, I'm personally not a fan of this. It is what it is. That's just saying, I can't change it. I'm not, that's kind of like a, a fancy way of saying whatever. I can't change it. I'm just going to go along with it. Um, as surrendering control of anything in your life, uh, it, well, it is what it is, right? I'm not a huge fan of that. Yes, sir? It is. I, yeah, I don't want to. This class is not about phrases that annoy Josh, but yes, it is. Uh, it can be It can be a cover. Yeah. It's it's an excuse that we make in order to avoid a situation that might be a little you know. Yeah. Might be a little dicey. Yeah. It, it can be it can be excuse uh for, for not getting involved in things. Um but you know, sometimes what we have, not us ourselves, but what we've been empowered with is the very answer that everybody needs. Um uh, but sometimes it takes time to do that. What? I'm going to have to invest time in somebody in order to help them with getting out of that snare. My personal time that I spend on the Xbox, I have to do this. So, um, so we need to make sure that we're thinking about that too, that we're not parroting the things that everybody else is parroting, uh, that we really stand out with, in, in, this, in this case, with the use of our time. We're also given time to glorify God. Uh, it says, now... May the God of your uh, of who give, uh, ugh, may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant to you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify God and Father our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are to glorify God uh, with our actions, with our lives, and we have time to do that. Uh, also, Matthew five sixteen, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and they glorify your Father who is in heaven. They don't glorify us, but they glorify God. Because they know that the things that we're doing, that we're doing those because of who we are, who we belong to. Um, and, uh, and so when people speak well of us, they're speaking well of a servant of God. Uh, when, when they see us doing those things, that, that, and when we mimic God in other people's lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, this, at the beginning, this one, we, he, we was created in his end to serve him. And everything we do, we have to prowl the little thing we got in our mouth, you know, because we'll say things that would cut that or the end of it. So we have to be careful with that because mm -hmm. we serve it. A master do not do that. Mm -hmm. And the things he don't do, we shouldn't do. Yes, sir. I read somewhere something about, you know, cursing our brother and worshiping God with the same tongue. It doesn't work, right? And, that, and that's, you know, we, we have to be very careful with, in, the, in all things that we do to glorify God with the life that's been given us, with the time that's been given to us, with every aspect that's been given to us to glorify God. Uh, and, and part of that is, is, you know, this letting our light shine, but that really is just a, a metaphor for an influence that we have uh, for those that are around us. And you've seen what light does uh, we moved out to Jupiter Farms, and it's amazing what, uh, what you get used to in the city. There's so much light here. And you move outside uh, a little ways, and there's, it was dark uh, and quiet. It was so nice. It's like, oh, there's stars here, too. 
and so the, so you see the influence that light has uh, on on things around us, and so we need to make sure that we're we're doing we're being that good influence that light has in darkness. That's exactly right. Um, in First Peter chapter three, uh, for the one who desires uh, life to love and see good days. That's like the American dream. Add two cars and you know, you know, white picket fence. That's like the American dream, right? Right there. If we want that. Desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil. Were you reading my notes? So, in his lips from speaking deceit, he must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears attend it to the prayer. But the face of the Lord against those who do evil. We glorify God by the very things that we say, by the things we do. Uh, in glorifying Him, um, we seek peace and pursue it. It's not just, ah, I'm trying to be peaceful with them, but it is what it is. Right? That's not, that is not what we seek peace and pursue it. Run after peace. Try to find peace. Grab a hold of peace. And do what we can to not let go of peace, uh, even if it costs some time. Uh, now, um, well, that's another lesson altogether, but we try to seek peace where we can, where we can have peace. Now, we don't have peace with iniquity. We don't have peace with things that are not correct. But where we can have peace, we need to seek peace. Um, and what does it say about our prayers? When we're doing these things that glorify God, what does it say about our prayers? God hears our prayers, but His face is against those who do evil. Uh, now that we're not talking about those who are repentant and want to find God or are crying out to God, like the Cornelius kind of—that's not what we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about people who are against God, um, but uh, try to make deals with God. Those deals that you know people make that have zero relationship with God, but want to make a deal with them when things get dicey. Probably not—you know—they don't get higher than whatever building you're in. Um, probably in that situation, but um, when we look at when we need to make sure that we're keeping ourselves in check also, uh, that our prayers are not hindered. Um, now, we look at time was opportune, time is different, uh, time is short. Um, when we look at uh, time is to be used wisely, Psalm 90, and there's a lot of passages in, in the Psalms, but Psalm uh, 90, verse 12, So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Uh, if, if we live in the concept that time is on our arm and counting down, would we live differently than if we just had all the time in the world and there's, you know, we're genetically engineered to never die? Would we live differently? Probably. Would we use things differently? Would we be more uh, wise with uh, judicial with the amount of time that we're using for different things? And so in this case, the, psalm, the psalmist writes, teach us to number our days, to have this concept that we are not infinite on this earth, that we will die and we will live differently and differently in respect to our relationship with God. In Psalm 39, verses 4 through 7, Lord, make me to know my end and what is the extent of my days. Let me to know how transient I am. Behold, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my lifetime as nothing is in, in your sight. Surely every man is at his best a mere breath. Surely every man walks about as a phantom. Surely they will make an uproar for nothing. He amasses riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, for, who, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. We see those two riches that are there at the end. We see the thing that is, is everybody's life is but a hand's breadth. Everybody's life is but we're about phantoms on this earth for a short period of time. But look at the commodities at the end. What two commodities do we see at the end here? It's not time. I'm kind of stepping off uh, the reservation here a little bit. But what, what two commodities do we see? Hope or earthly treasures? But not just hope in, I hope the Dallas Cowboys will have a great season next year. Is that a good hope? I was raised, I have no other choice but to, to vote uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, there was no other team when I was growing up. Um, we, had, we had a good run in the 90s, right? Uh, but uh, hope in God or earthly treasures. If my life is but a span. Where do I want my treasure? What commodity do I want? I want hope in God. I used to work um, at like repairing uh, play toys, ATVs, motorcycles, jet skis, that kind of stuff. 
And I was a guy that kind of interfaced with the mechanics and people that came, came in. And I was a guy that kind of helped. When, when you went from salesman to garage and you learned about your machine, I was that interface. And um, people come back and they buy this shiny new jet ski, right? And it's 150 horsepower. It can pull two skiers and a trailer or whatever. And um, they go to the lake. They buy it on a Friday. They go to the lake, have a good time with their friends. And Monday comes around, we get a phone call. They're like, yeah, bring it in. It broke. I mean, it's got, it's got a warranty, right? It's got a warranty. Well, we told them, you don't want to go and do the whole movie thing where you just run it up on the beach in the sand, right? You don't want to do that. Because on a jet ski, if you don't know, it sucks water up out of the lake, ocean, whatever you're in, used to cool the engine and shoots it back out again. Well, if it sucks up sand into the engine, it does some really cool things to your engine. Now, it's cool for us because we get to take it apart. And if you've ever seen a piston explode inside an engine, it's really kind of amazing. Um, but if you have to pay for that, it's not so amazing at all. We're talking about you know, thousands of dollars, and it's not under warranty. So I was the guy that had to call him back and say, you know, it's broken. Um, but what am I getting at? Can you trust stuff? How many of you bought a car brand new, even the brand new smell? And how long did it take before it starts to break, even though it has a warranty? It's going to wear out. It always wears out. Everything wears out. Everything wears out. So trusting in stuff um, or trusting and having a hope on God that's eternal, where there's no shadow of turning, who is faithful, who has always done what he promised he would do, and is waiting with the reward that if we sow correctly, we will reap that reward. Where would you like your hope to be in? With the time you've been given, where would you like uh, your hope uh, to be? I don't think we're almost out of time. Um, and it's also, let's skip ahead a little bit. Uh, is it about how much time you have? It's not, right? It's about how you use it. Now, Methuselah, he's famous for how long he lived, uh, which in, if you add up all the time frames, uh, he died the year of the flood. Did he die of a heart attack or did he die because uh, he, he was not such a, a good boy? We don't know. Uh, but if you look at the, who made a bigger influence, and obviously all things being even, Christ was a little bit different than Methuselah, but you, you get the point, right? Um, also, uh, deciding how we use our time. If we look at just a few things, am I seeking first the kingdom of God when I'm using my time? Uh, is this the best? Uh, is it best for the church? Uh, does this use of my time uh, better, better for those who are around me, that light concept? Does this use of my time rob time from something more important? Um, and uh, have I grown or matured more by the use of this time? So we look at our use of time, and you're probably not going to have like, these questions just ready fire, but think about what we're doing with our time. Now, I'm not against leisure time, but everything needs to be balanced. As was said earlier, we need to budget the time that has been given to us and making sure what we're doing with our time is a time that glorifies God uh, and is, is for Him, that the majority of our time is in service to the Lord. Any questions, comments about anything? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Did you, all, did you hear that? I'm sorry. Uh, did you, we are eternal beings trapped in mortal, finite body. Like if we're in this life we're living in right now, this short period of time, determines where we are in eternity, right? Uh, after this. Uh, so if there are, thank you very much for your time uh, this morning.